Hey, it's Professor Adam. Let's talk about the molecular orbital theory of octahedral complexes. This is what the d orbitals look like. They are defined as having an angular momentum quantum number of 2, which gives 2l plus 1, or 5 orbitals, which can contain up to 10 electrons. These d orbitals are pointed along or between the Cartesian axes. The top orbitals point along the Cartesian axes, and the bottom orbitals point between them. From our previous video, you may remember that we started solving molecular orbital problems using a six-step process involving determining point groups, assigning axes, finding reducible and irreducible representations of group orbitals, which were then combined with the central atom atomic orbitals of the same symmetry to obtain the full molecular orbital diagram. The most important single transition metal complex is the octahedral metal complex, with an orange metal atom in the center surrounded by six ligand groups attached to it with the OH high symmetry point group. In this case, only the sigma bonding interactions will be considered, but pi and delta bonding is also possible. The six bond vectors from the ligands to the metal are defined as shown and are simply sigma bonds. This means that the dz squared orbital will be able to have sigma interactions with the ligands that approach along the z axis, and the dx squared minus y squared will be able to have sigma bonds along the x and y axes. The other three d orbitals will engage primarily in pi type bonding, but cannot form sigma bonds in this complex because they have nodes along the internuclear axis. Here are the ligand metal sigma bond vectors and by using the character table for the octahedral point group can be used to find the reducible representation for the sigma bond vectors giving this sub sigma table. Then it is reduced to give the irreducible representations using the equation giving an A1G, an EG and a T1U set with six different group orbitals. As A1G is singly degenerate, EG is doubly degenerate, and T1u is triply degenerate. Now the symmetries of the group orbitals need to be compared to that of the central atom using the character table. Metal atoms have s, p, and d valence orbitals, giving a total of nine orbitals to be considered. Reading off the table, it can be seen that the a1g group orbitals match the metal s orbital. The T1U representing the metal P orbitals is also present in the group orbitals and so makes symmetry matched pairs. The EG set has the symmetry of the DZ squared and X squared minus Y squared orbitals, which form a symmetry matched pair with the two EG group orbitals. This takes care of the SP and two of the D orbitals. The remaining D orbitals, which have a symmetry of T2G, have no symmetry matched pair among the irreducible representations of group orbitals in this example, meaning there will be non-bonding without any sigma interactions. How do these orbitals appear physically? In principle, the projection operator method can be used to give the formula for the molecular orbitals, but instead, let's go straight to the results. The symmetry adapted linear combination of the totally symmetric A1G is a linear sum of the atomic orbitals with an equal contribution from all six ligands labeled 1 to 6, and they will give good overlap between the metal and ligand orbitals. The SALC for the T1U group orbital representation has sigma 1 minus 3, 2 minus 4, and 5 minus 6, and this is to match the metal atoms Px py and pz orbitals, meaning there can only be two ligands interacting with any one metal p orbital. The final set is the eg set, which allows interaction along the Cartesian axis. The proper symmetry adapted linear combinations are shown here as 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4, in order to have the correct symmetry of the dx squared minus y squared orbital. The unusual group orbital 2 times 6 plus 2 times 5 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 has double the contribution from 5 and 6 in order to properly interact with the dz squared orbital. Remember that all the results shown here can be determined explicitly using the projection operator method and normalization. This then leaves the T2g metal orbitals, the dyz, zx, and xy orbitals.
it can be immediately noticed that there can be no sigma interaction between a ligand and any of these orbitals because the sigma interaction approaches along a node in these orbitals. The molecular orbital diagram for a general ML6 complex will look like this with the metal atom on the left with S, P and D orbitals and the six ligand donors on the right. The ligands have orbitals with EG, T1U and A1G symmetry. Usually, when we have donor ligands, they are donating a lone pair and so each of the ligand group orbitals is full and the number of metal electrons is dependent on the metal in question. The metal S orbital and the ligand A1G combine to give a strong sigma bonding and antibonding interaction. The metal P orbitals, the T1U set, give us medium strength bonding and antibonding orbitals. The final bonding and antibonding set is the EG set. And then finally, the T2G orbitals are non-bonding. Remember that the sigma bonding donor ligands typically have a lone pair of electrons that they donate to the central metal. The sigma donor ligands fill up the bonding molecular orbitals, and so the only major changes are caused by the number of metal electrons in this example. There are five of them, and so all of them go into the T2G non-bonding molecular orbitals. This gives the HOMO as T2G and the LUMO as EG star. The energy difference between these two molecular orbital sets is called delta octahedral or the octahedral splitting energy. Depending on the size of the energy difference between the HOMO and LUMO given as delta octahedral, some electrons will prefer to be in the EG star set rather than the T2G set. It is these frontier orbitals that dictate a lot of the chemistry of octahedral complexes. Remember that this is only for sigma bonding, and if there is pi bonding, then the T2G set can start to interact, potentially changing its position in the diagram. So in summary, when building molecular orbital diagrams, the central atom atomic orbitals and outer group orbitals are combined to make molecular orbitals when they have similar energies and are symmetry matched. The symmetry of the group orbitals can always be determined by reducing the reducible representation if inspection is not possible. Degenerate group orbital wave functions can be determined using the projection operator method through orthogonalization and normalization. Let's check comprehension.